Oi pessoal, tudo bem? Sejam bem-vindos a mais um Sofá da House. A gente pede licença para entrar na sua casa hoje para falar como a digitalização está transformando a indústria moveleira em toda a sua cadeia. Então se você é dono de loja, de alguma indústria e quer entender melhor como que o digital pode te ajudar, até se você tem uma loja física, a gente tem convidados muito preciosos hoje para discutir isso. Eu queria começar convidando então para se juntar a gente aqui a Lourdes Manzanares, que é diretora comercial e de marketing da Interprint Brasil. Oi, Lourdes, bem-vinda. Oi, Luan, muito obrigada. Muito obrigada também a todo o time da House. É um grande prazer estar aqui hoje com vocês. Igualmente, a gente que pede licença para suas férias, né? Você está aí do outro <risos> lado do Atlântico participando desse bate-papo especial. E eu queria começar, Lourdes, para você apresentar então um pouquinho da Interprint, né? que é uma marca mundial, aí, líder dos papéis decorativos, alemã, e me explicar um pouquinho como que é esse novo normal, essa expressão que virou um jargão, aí, mas eu sei que você tem algumas reticências. Eu queria que você explicasse um pouquinho como que o digital entra nisso, como que ele é a realidade, né? ele não é o futuro. Obrigada, Luana. É, bom, o assunto é tão importante que é, eu parei um dia das minhas férias para poder estar aqui com vocês. Um, a Interprint do Brasil, uh, ou a Interprint no mundo, como o Luan comentou, é, e a maioria do público já deve conhecer, é líder é, no segmento da, de design é, para ser aplicado nas, é, nos revestimentos é, de superfícies decorativas. Em nesse sentido, temos várias fábricas no mundo, oito fábricas, e a última fábrica, o bebê do grupo, foi a fábrica do Brasil, que agora, no mês de junho, está de aniversário de nossos primeiros cinco anos de produção no Brasil. E estou fazendo um, um, um comentário diferente à, à tua pergunta, Luan, eu gostaria muito de explicar por que nós chegamos aqui no Brasil, é, porque foi uma união muito importante é, de design, de um líder de design como é o Grupo Interprint, com um país líder no design como é o Brasil, líder na América Latina e é, liderando uh, as diferentes é, é, etimologias, as diferentes é, personalidades que tem este grande país, liderando design também em muitos lugares é, do mundo. Um, em esse sentido, também, quando nos encontramos este, no mês de março, neste momento de pandemia desconhecido para todos nós, e a House teve essa iniciativa de estar perto, bem perto, semanalmente, diariamente, do, do público uh, paranaense, principalmente, e do Brasil. E depois também, quando a House uh, quis estar também presente uh, e trazer para, para o público aqui no Brasil uh, o que estava acontecendo a nível conceptual uh, em Milão, uh, foi para nós um, algo que uh, praticamente não precisamos uh, pensar. Uh, Sabíamos que eh, a maneira de hoje, com este distanciamento físico, de poder estar perto de nossos clientes era eh, acompanhando a eles eh, digitalmente dia a dia. Então, começamos esta colaboração com a House e eu gostaria também de parabenizar a vocês por eh, todo o conteúdo eh, que tem ido transmitindo a, a, ao público no Brasil durante estes últimos meses. E aí eu e vou entrar um pouco interromper para dizer que a gente agradece muito. Sem o apoio de vocês, não estaríamos lá. Bom, e, e aí já quero um, me aproximar do, do assunto que vamos a, a conversar hoje no Sofa House, é, que é hum, de que maneira conseguimos aproximar o mundo físico e o mundo digital é, dentro da indústria de móveis, é, ou dentro da indústria dos móveis. Até um, esta semana eu já li algumas indústrias é, in, de, ino, de inovação estão usando uma palavra que se chama digital, é, para falar já de físico e digital. Um, o computador, o iPad, o telefone, ele se convirtiu nos últimos uh, três meses e meio 
no nosso companheiro uh, é, do mesmo modo que um acorda e toma um café de manhã é, usava o digital para poder ter contato porque o, o ser humano precisa de contato e é nesse sentido um, essa aproximação do físico e o digital para a Interprince é muito importante é, de ter essa presença e estar sempre acompanhando e poder guiar eh, e nos deixar guiar juntos da mão com o nosso cliente, já que estamos em um momento, Luan, eh, que não vamos a ter outras inspirações fora de lo que é eh, o nosso próprio eh, inovação, a nossa própria criatividade. E então, eh, neste momento de, de distanciamento social, nós queremos estar acompanhando e fazer esse futuro juntos com o nosso cliente. Por isso, trazemos também um convidado, eh, que é bem mais interessante que fale ele que eu, eh, desde a Itália, o, o nosso querido amigo Andrea, eh, uma pessoa que já faz anos que começou a aproximar o mundo físico e o mundo digital na indústria mobileira italiana. A gente vai apresentar os próximos convidados e a gente vai mudar a chavinha para o inglês. Another special guest is Maurizio Burrato. Welcome. Maurizio, the director of Interprint Italia. Thank you, thank you, Luan. Thank you for inviting me and then to represent Interprint Italia in this beautiful uh, talk. Thank you so much. Yeah, great to have you here. And also, uh, Andrea Diotti, which is founder of Valve Solutions and also very well known uh, for having created uh, Diotti.com. So, Andrea, Welcome. Thanks for uh, for inviting me and uh, hello everybody. Hello. Yeah. So we are talking about um, uh, how digitization is transforming the furniture industry. And, and Andrea, my first question is towards you. Tell us a bit about your own story. How did you find the necessity to focus on digital tools? Because I know your family comes from the furniture maker, right? Yes. Uh, yes, actually, I was uh, working as a young, young uh, interior designer and salesman in uh, my father's showroom. And actually, the focus on digital tools started uh, around 20 years ago in the early 2000s. And uh, internet was re relatively new back then in Italy. And uh, uh, I felt uh, it could be productive to show uh, to our prospects, to our possible clients, uh, uh, what we did offer. And, and thus we showed them as much content as possible. And, uh, and also being an interior designer myself, uh, I felt it was really uh, a pity to repeat the same things over and over uh, to clients, especially when certain information uh, was becoming accessible to user simply by reading uh, on, on their own uh, from, a, from a website. Uh, and thus at, at the beginning, there was not much technology involved. There was more frustration uh, driving the driving innovation, actually, and uh, so there were no no specific interfaces, but actually it was content. Uh, we uh, content was where we started, and and actually even today content is a is a critical and very important uh, part of uh, the whole a whole digital presence of a brand. Uh, so this is how it started. It started with content and frustration and then content. Great. It's very interesting to know that content is the main core, right? We always say yeah, for, that. At least for us. At least for us. Okay. And, and what are the differences, Andrea, between the roles that digital and physical elements play in the furniture stores, retailers, and the industry itself? Hmm. Um, okay, you mean the, the difference between physical and digital? Yeah, yeah. What are the differences? Okay. Are each of them focused on? Okay. Okay, well... Um, Basically, digital and physical elements, uh, web and retail, are are not uh, opposite uh, parts of uh, of reality, but they are complement, totally complementary, and and they are mixable in so many creative ways. 
uh, that for us uh, it's actually a relatively old approach uh, to discuss the differences as if they were separate channels. Uh, I mean, there are different instruments uh, which must work together on the same channel. Uh, it can be the consumer channel, it can be business to business, uh, it can be contract of uh, supplies and so on, uh, but there are two instruments that support the same objective. Uh, so if I were to sum up uh, the, the actual nature of both instruments, I would say that the focus of digital uh, is information. Um, the focus of physical is experience uh, and they both share a common focus which is interaction. So interaction for us uh, is uh, uh, at the core of uh, modern retail uh, with a custom mix between digital content, digital, digital interfaces and experiential physical showrooms. Uh, and actually the, the, the custom, when I refer to custom mix, uh, it really depends uh, on the specific brand we are talking about uh, and the needs of a brand because, because there's, there are, there's not a single recipe for every single brand. Uh, certain aspects stay the same, some others of course must change depending on the, on the positioning, on the product category and so on. Great, and talking about digital, what's the strongest point in your view uh, in the digital world today? Social media? Is it the front line? Well, actually, uh, I'm, I'm, probably, I'm, I'm not the best person for this question because I, I don't really believe uh, in uh, investing heavily in, uh, in, social, uh, in social media. Uh, actually, um, probably if you uh, quote social media, uh, you're asking about uh, how to be visible and how to reach many people uh, with, uh, with digital. And uh, uh, the best way to get people's attention today, it has been like this in the last uh, 15 years at least, uh, 20 even, uh, is uh, to get uh, the attention of search engines and to get their attention, the attention of search engines, uh, you basically need uh, good content and good interfaces. So we go back to the uh, good old content. And uh, well, because search engines love good content, uh, users love good content and good interfaces. Search engines always uh, measure users' appreciation. Uh, and does, uh, by doing this, it starts a sort of virtuous circle. Uh, and uh, also social media uh, and ADV uh, can help uh, completing uh, uh, what uh, must be at the core of uh, any initiative, uh, which at least for us uh, must be content. A, a very important concept uh, between uh, in comparing the importance of investing on content and in, in the possibility of investing on social media is that when you invest on your content, you actually own it. When you invest uh, on, a, uh, on social media, uh, you invest on, your, on growing your community. Of course, it is an asset, but you don't really own the community. Uh, the, the community owns uh, itself, and if there's a real owner, it's the owner of the social media platform, not the company. Uh, this is why we support investing in content and interfaces on, uh, uh, on the branded website and configurators rather than social media and ADV. Wow, you surprised me. <laughs> Thank you very much. So Maurice, I'd like to know your opinion about, we are, we are talking now about a, a bit of marketing and digital. And I just asked Andrea if the social media is the front line of this. If uh, retailers and industries should invest in this, in a better interface in social media and talking to people. I'd like to know your opinion about it. Uh, how important is this? To what extent? What's your opinion? Yeah, this is exactly the point, uh, Luan, you catch. So uh, the focus between, uh, for example, companies like uh, Andreas One and Interprint are a little bit different. So uh, if I'm not wrong, so Andreas position in the market is, is, is quite at that high hand section sector. So Interprint is a typical B2B business-based company. 
since years, uh, we would like to extend our audience. And nowadays, the only way, the only tools, the most effective tools to enlarge our, our audience and to reach uh, as far as possible our audience in the market is to invest in the social media. So we have a, a social media manager in, in Germany. We have, of course, an Instagram account, a Facebook account, LinkedIn account. We use the most um, Instagram, of course. Uh, we are using, for example, Instagram TV to broadcast our messages uh, to uh, to Turkey, for example. This is a, we just start this experience. Uh, our our uh, um, design and marketing director in Germany, Salvatore Fiduzzi, is leading this uh, this experience. And um, and of course, digitalization is helping us to keep our community connected. So. Um, you have to consider the interprint as location worldwide, okay? And uh, just to give an example, now a few, uh, a couple of hours ago, we had a, um, uh, a presentation, a webinar with our colleagues right in Brazil, in the US and in Spain. This morning we were connected with China. Last week we, we, we were connected with our uh, colleagues in, in Russia, just to, to give an example. So we are, we are trying to use as much as possible the opportunities we have today um, to keep, I repeat, for us it's a very important issue to keep our community connected, our community alive. Um, of course, this is clear. We cannot, we cannot travel, we cannot fly. And so we have to do something to, to be very close to our customers. Do you have any clues, Mauricio, for other furniture industries, how to explore better these digital experiences to make it even greater? Do you have any clues or do you pass it to Andrea? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, of course, of course, the, the Andrea is, is the, the authority, is the expert today in, in, in that one. And uh, his activity, but I, I don't want to speak in... Uh, in a place of him, uh, his activity is uh, even more challenging because is uh, um, is trying to, to 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 connect people with this kind of segment, high hand customizable furniture, and this is is a, is a part of the market. The other part is the market is the is the a very cheap price, uh, cheap uh, first first uh, level entry level furniture, let's say. Um, but very cheap furniture and this is is quite this is something quite common so people are prone to spend money in that you you don't risk much 50 100 euros maximum so uh, the 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 real the biggest challenge is what An andrea is doing okay andrea let's talk a little bit more please uh I'd like to know the same question I did to your colleague. How the furniture industry can work with these digital experiences? How to make it even greater, better? Do you have any clues for retailers and industries? Well, for, first of all, I'm flattered by, by Maurizio's description, but <laughs> I'll try I'll try to do them my best. Uh, actually, we, we in the last uh, few years, we uh, developed what we call uh, a digital customer journey. Uh, we developed it specifically for brand, for, in, for interior design brands, and uh, uh, it was specifically specifically focused on highly customized items, and possibly with for brands that have uh, mono brand showrooms, their own showrooms, but not necessarily. Actually, in the digital customer journey is based on a very simple concept. Uh, which is uh, using content for sorry for the keyword keyword of the day being repeated so using content and interfaces to transform occasional users in what we call qualified users and qualified users most often turn themselves on their own into buyers uh, so the basic concept uh, is uh, is very simple and thus we focus on content and interfaces uh, we already and talked about the importance of content. Uh, so I'd like to 
talk briefly about interfaces and uh, well actually the most important interfaces which often work together are uh, the, the brand uh, web portal and the product configurators. Um, an effective web portal is actually the sum of many parts. Uh, its design uh, is the first and most valuable interface in a way. Uh, an, internal, an, an internal search engine is, a, is an important interface for wider assortments. Uh, layered navigation tools, anything that helps uh, the use, users interacting with, uh, with our content. Uh, and we could talk a bit more about product configurators and um, I, I'd like to call them the main interface, at least in the field of high-end, uh, just-in-time furniture collections. So we're not talking about stock furniture, but just-in-time furniture. And um, as Valve Solutions, we implement projects based on an online 3D product configurator, uh, which helps uh, increasing the effectiveness of uh, sales processes and the efficiency of production processes. Uh, of, of course, it's not the occasion today to describe in detail what it does and how, but the very important concept uh, is that uh, with the intermediation of uh, showrooms, and uh, possibly of uh, operators of a order development team. Uh, actually, such a solution uh, does connect uh, directly the ideas of final users directly to the manufacturing plant, actually reducing the intervention uh, of, uh, of humans. Uh, I'm not talking about a, a scenario like 1984 of, of a future scenario where uh, there's no people working in the industry. We don't want that. But we see technology as an aid uh, to human intervention and having people both in retail and both in production adding value and not doing uh, things that, that uh, actually a machine, a software can do. Can do easily after after a, a proper investment of course not not from the start and not uh, not for free but with a good investment there can be um, uh, much saving in terms of uh, businesses and uh, also there's, there can be a better experience for uh, users because users are more ready to uh, adopt uh, technology and innovation than businesses are and this is where business businesses can make a difference good I'd like to explore a little bit of uh, the main word you said, content. Could mm -hmm. you give us an example of what a good content is? Is it a good video about the product or is it a, a, a well-written text or what is a good content? Uh, I, it's, a, it's a very good question because uh, uh, there, there's no answer to this question. I mean, uh, <laughs> good, content, good content is the sum of uh, many parts. Uh, I mean, uh, starting from a, a personal passion on, on writing, uh, 20 years ago, I, starting, I started writing a lot, writing, 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 writing. And uh, actually in time, we developed uh, a kind of editorial technique, uh, which then we uh, uh, joined it uh, together with all the best practices for search engine optimization and uh, actually writing good text. And by good, I mean good for the user and good for the search engine. Uh, it's essential. I see many, many websites uh, which might be uh, beautiful in terms of look, but they desperately lack uh, textual content. Uh, and the, it's essential. Of course, uh, pictures are a perfect example of, uh, of uh, con essential content, just like uh, uh, video marketing, uh, video content, uh, which is, has become more increasingly more important. Uh, they, it can be technical schemes. It can be a PDF uh, with instruct assembling instructions. Uh, there's, there's many, quite, quite a few type of contents. Basically, we can divide between textual and visual content. And the sum of all parts makes uh, a, a great page that can result be entertain entertaining for the user, and in the end, uh, it can help the user and the operator and the interior designer to close a sale. Right. Uh, I would like to talk to Lourdes now. Lourdes, <laughs> come back. Um, I'd like to know your opinion about it. 
And if you could explain for us two good examples, I think that Interprint has, uh, it's press play and room styles. What is it and how it can help? Yeah, thank you, Luan. So um, for us, for Interprint, uh, we began digitalization uh, has been a very um, important issue. And uh, as you said, we began already um, two years ago uh, to um, offer to our customers uh, a different way uh, to uh, present our designs, to access to our collection. And their uh, digitalization was um, uh, uh, playing a very big role. So uh, we were um, studying and, uh, and, 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 and uh, analyzing how uh, like uh, Andrea said, the final user, how the final user is um, um, consuming today information, how uh, they are consuming music, how they are consuming, uh, so um, uh, what, what is mo the, mo the, the element that they are using the most during the day. And uh, we realized that, uh, so no one, uh, is, no one more is using uh, or almost uh, a newspaper or a physical, in this case, a physical uh, media. So uh, everything is uh, on a streaming with different programs. Uh, music, uh, I check also for a doctor, uh, remember uh, how important has been technology and digitalization during these last three months even to have uh, 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 to the possibility to talk to a doctor and to explain to him what is happening to you and, and, and instead of being present. And so like this um, uh, was born our uh, new concept, what is we call press play, um, in order to um, launch digitally and to present digitally and uh, like uh, the way you are consuming uh, the news today to our customers, our collection. So we change from a stable uh, collection that is made uh, on specific moments uh, of the year, after Milan, after uh, special local shows, to a continuous platform of the course uh, where our customer can consume uh, our uh, design and creativity. And um, I invite our um, uh, the public uh, to enter into uh, our website, uh, double, I don't know how you say it in uh, Portuguese, but www.interprint.com and um, uh, to be able to consume also uh, and, and this, this kind of uh, product. Each design is related to a special mood, to a special atmosphere and character, and you have the story also that uh, um, uh, was the uh, initial point for that design. And of course, uh, since um, each design, I said, it's a, it's, it's, we want to bring life uh, also and uh, to generate passion for uh, these designs. Uh, each design is related to special music uh, that you can download uh, free on uh, Spotify. Um, another program that we began to uh, use also um, around, I would say, three years ago, four years ago, is um, Room Styler. Room Styler, um, the, the owner of, uh, of Room Styler, the, the person who developed it, an infant print made a collaboration and what is from style? Um, we are using it mainly in Europe, and um, it is a program where um, any creative person, um, architect, designer, uh, whoever uh, who has interest in, in design and interior design can go there and uh, select designs of for surface or print and look. How it looks like in an uh, atmosphere, in an uh, uh, in interior decoration uh, that he wants to create. Um, on one side, uh, this is uh, like a, a collection, uh, like a library of designs that we put on this position uh, to be used uh, by worldwide uh, or mostly in Europe. Uh, and we are extending it worldwide uh, to the uh, innovative, innovative and creat creative people. But for us, that gives us also a lot of information about what are the trends uh, and the colors, what is um, um, most uh, um, uh, that people like the most 
in different parts of uh, the world. Uh, and this is a very important information that we transmit to our customers uh, when we create a collection uh, together. Uh, so, um, these two tools, digital tools, uh, are very used today, but uh, when um, we talk about digitalization, and um, this is why the, the, the experience of uh, Andrea is uh, so important for us, uh, because I think that in our industry in Brazil, we are still a little far away uh, of, uh, of um, being digital. Um, um, we need to consider that the, I don't like to say this, like to say this new normality, but we are facing something absolutely um, uh, not thinkable uh, a few months ago. And um, we don't know what is, uh, can't, what is happening or coming, what other um, um, difficult situations can come into the future. So digitalization has been, is proved to be, uh, has proved to be a way to work uh, to allow also people to combine private life with, uh, uh, with professional life. Um, digitalization can be also a way for companies uh, to reduce uh, their expenses, uh, the investments in, 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 fest, in, in fixed assets. So um, we need to invest and to get closer of, uh, of uh, being more and more digital in, in, in our business without, without uh, forgetting um, the transport of emotions, because this is what makes uh, uh, the end user to have the final decision. So I completely agree with Andrea. Physical and digital uh, work together. You cannot have one without the other. I couldn't agree more. Thank you, Lourdes. And <laughs> now, Maurizio, I would like your opinion. Uh, I know that uh, you come from a carpenter, carpenter family, and since 1993, you work with a wood-based uh, industry, right? And yes, what's the, correct. Yeah. What's the main difficulties you see in the, in the, in the industry today and how uh, digitalization can help? What's your vision about it? What's difficult today and how to aid? I have to come back. Um, I hope to know to not repeat, but the keyword of today seems to be content. Uh, it really, really, it's it's very important. It seems that it's impossible to disconnect content from the digitalization, right? And uh, the the way to promote any product since ever, since uh, internet it, it didn't exist yet was to, to provide your product with a, with a content. We, with uh, what we call today storytelling, right? So this yeah. is the base of the, of the commercials, of the advertisement. Um, let, me, let me say that uh, Interprint began over than 10 years ago to provide to our customers alongside the normal product. Um, uh, a high package of content to add in value to our product. We noticed that just providing maybe the most beautiful decos was not enough. People, um, our, our, our clientage was more and more educated. They were, they were hungry to know what about this product? What is behind this product? Why we de develop this, this uh, type of products? Why we did this color? So, and uh, uh, we, we, began, we began to create uh, um, a good storytelling uh, to, to, uh, to pack our, our, uh, our products to, for, for our customers. And it was, a, at that time was a winning, was a winning strategy. Can you imagine today why we have to keep the distance if you wouldn't have contents? Today, this is impossible to meet customers, to show them physically how uh, a product looks like, how, uh, how smooth the touch is, or how beautiful the color is. 
Today is, is really impossible. This is the most, the, the biggest part of our job. Can you imagine if you couldn't speak to our customers uh, to deliver contents, to tell stories, true stories, credible stories, okay? So since ever, uh, just reply and come back to, to your question. Since ever, from the, the, the very beginning, the very beginning of the furniture industry, especially here in Italy, um, commercial and advertisement were full of um, emotional, with, uh, with emotional contents. And uh, today we call storytelling this, this it, it works, it works. And fortunately we have now, we, we trained for, t for over 10 years to tell stories to our customers and to replace, uh, let's all for not so <laughs> long again, uh, our physical contact with our customers. Thank you very much. What a lesson. I like this pretty much. <laughs> Andrea, let's go back to you again. <clears throat> when we talk about the digital customer journey and service design, what's crucial not to forget about it? What tools do we have to, to help us with strategy or optimization or user experience? Mm, what, what do you mean, sorry, uh, in terms yeah, of what tools like uh, for, in, in the digital customer journey? Yeah, what's crucial not to forget when we talk about service design? Okay, uh, well, actually, uh, there's, uh, uh, there's a really, it, we talked about the importance of content, we spoke about uh, product configurators, uh, which are really essential for customization. Uh, what not to forget, uh, I would say that there's a basic uh, and underlying trade-off on every interface, on every tool that we design and we offer our clients. <clears throat> there's always a trade-off uh, uh, between the ease of use and the scope and the depth. Uh, that the that the tool can uh, can uh, can express. Uh, for example, I might develop uh, a product configurator, uh, which actually allows to design uh, a fully customized closet uh, with fully customized interiors, with fully customized finishes and materials and handles and so on. <clears throat> and the and the challenge is keeping it simple, because the difference between uh, well, content uh, is great, as we said, but uh, actually the user, when uh, he approaches content, uh, is kind of passive. He chooses what content to, to, to read and watch and so on. He, he can, uh, just like having a remote control in, in his hand, uh, he can uh, dismiss a, a type of content and choose not to read it anymore and not to watch it anymore, but he is passive. When a, a, a client, uh, it, it, might, it might be a business client or a private user, uses a, a tool, a platform that we offer him uh, or her, uh, actually it's very important, uh, uh, it's uh, is, he is of use uh, to avoid uh, rejection. Uh, and so uh, there's always this trade-off uh, uh, and the challenge is uh, offering something uh, great uh, something memorable, something that uh, other brands do not offer, but uh, with a level, uh, uh, with an ease of use, uh, an ease of use that can be approachable by the mildly interested user. Uh, for such a specific platform, uh, we, don't, uh, we don't aim uh, to satisfy users that want uh, instant gratification in five seconds, 10 seconds. It's not our aim if you want to sell uh, high-end furniture, uh, but still uh, it must be something that can be learned in a few minutes. Unless, otherwise, it's it's simply not uh, useful. I, I, I don't know if I did answer to your question. I tried. You did. <laughs> you did, you did. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Now I'd like to jump into virtual reality, VR glasses, mm -hmm. And because it's getting more accessible uh, <laughs> uh, as the time goes by. And what are the differences? I'd like to start with that. What are the differences between VR and mixed reality, Andrea? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, uh, well, first of all, I'm not uh, an expert uh, in the topic, so I'll try and share uh, my views as, as furniture retailer and digital consultant. Uh, well, actually, VR, virtual reality, is when you actually enter a virtual world and you lose contact with the real world around you. Uh, for example, with platforms like H H HTC Vive or Oculus, uh, mixed reality is when you add virtual elements to the real world around you and uh, actually the virtual and physical elements do interact uh, uh, in some ways. Uh, a, a previous version of mixed reality it was actually, uh, is actually augmented reality where you add virtual em elements to the real world but the virtual and real do not really interact. Well, with mixed reality, and we have an example in uh, um, uh, the Microsoft uh, platform, uh, in the HoloLens, uh, actually the two parts of the perceived reality, they do interact. Um, in our view, uh, actually virtual reality, and this is only our Person, my personal view, actually, um, the virtual reality is not really suitable for retail. Uh, it's meant specifically for gaming and entertainment. And I think that retail, even in a post-COVID world, uh, retail is about interaction. Interaction with physical spaces and interaction with people around you. Uh, so it could be my wife uh, visiting the showroom with me or an interior designer supporting us while we visit the showroom. Uh, and uh, you wear a device where you, um, through which you don't see the, the, the world around you. Uh, it's difficult to, to interact like that. Uh, in this regard, mixed reality, on the other end, has a much greater potential to, in a retail context. Uh, you just need great 3D content to start off with. Uh, and this is another use of a powerful 3D configurator. Um, VR, VR, on the other end, uh, does find uh, its use in an architectural context where the focus is not uh, a specific uh, product uh, or the actual sale of furniture, uh, while it's a whole project uh, of a big room or of a house. Um, for these reasons, uh, in recent months and years, we have been working on mixed reality solutions and we are keeping an eye on, on this technology for future applications. Uh, it's just correct uh, to point out that both technologies uh, right now are, are not really suitable for commercial entry-level target uh, because simply it's too expensive, uh, both for the technology itself and both for the time that goes uh, by an operator to create a scene and so on. And so right now, and until artificial intelligence uh, comes in the picture, uh, they are suitable only for high-end retail and their clients. I know of examples of VR used uh, in uh, lower target uh, brands, uh, and they, they have been also successful, uh, but uh, in those examples, there's less interaction. While uh, for us, a very important concept is interaction, not only watching. If I enter a VR scene and I, and I look around, I simply look around and I cannot interact, uh, it's not even a, like a video game. Uh, while uh, the, 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 the next step is actually interacting with these uh, new realities. All right. You said you are developing a new technology. Uh, can you tell us a, a little bit about it? What's it? Oh, actually, well, it's... It's, it's, uh, it's actually the integration between uh, uh, our 3D configurator and uh, the HoloLens, uh, HoloLens 2. Uh, and actually, it's still uh, HoloLens is a great platform. Uh, HoloLens 2 is, is better, obviously better than HoloLens 1. Uh, it actually enlarged uh, the, the um, uh, scope, the high scope. Uh, I don't know if it's the correct word in English. Uh, the, the angle, the angle to which to actually our our eyes can see near 180 degrees, probably slightly more. While with uh, all with these devices right now, you have a narrower uh, scope, and uh, this work uh, work well works reasonably well with smaller items. But uh, you cannot envision a room. Uh, 
like he like he were neo in the in matrix uh, in the white scene uh, where he's offered uh, he's to, he's being taught uh, kung fu and so on i mean it's it's not to that level of reality uh, but of course we we can envision that sort of future and it's uh, it's good to progress in that direction okay i'd like you to talk uh, to explain uh, to highlight a little bit about the importance of materials and, how, and okay. how to explore the textures, images, or sustainable DNA uh, through digitalization. Uh, what's your opinion about that? Well, um, actually, this, this is a big topic uh, on its own. Um, as, as we said, uh, the, for the best interaction, you need uh, product configurators. For VR and mixed reality, you need product configurators, but the necessary ingredient for product configurators is the process of materials, the digitization. So this is this is why it's so important. Um, there are uh, specific uh, tools, machinery. I'm referring to hardware mixed with software, uh, which. Uh, uh, can be used to digitize uh, uh, materials. Uh, these uh, solutions are very, these, sol these ready-made solutions are, are very high-end. Uh, they range between maybe 50,000 and 100,000 euros. They are normally not available to a, 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 the everyday brand. They are available only to, to big uh, corporations uh, with this sort of uh, cost only for the hardware, not for the person that it's going to operate it. Uh, so this is why we uh, developed, started from 12 years ago, uh, we started taking pictures to materials on our, on our own, uh, really starting with nothing in terms of hardware and software. And then we found a way to use uh, a, a tool, uh, a hardware, which was specifically designed to digitize, to acquire pictures of uh, uh, textile products uh, for the fashion industry, for e-commerce uh, ventures uh, selling uh, fashion online. And so right now we use uh, such, a, such a device uh, to acquire high quality pictures of any materials, not only textile and leather and leathers, but also stone, lacquers, uh, uh, laminates, uh, like interprint, uh, like anything, literally even, even metals. Uh, and uh, starting from those pictures, uh, then uh, we develop uh, what they're called uh, texture maps. Uh, and these texture maps, uh, right now they are developed uh, by, by a man by an operator, they're not developed automatically. And uh, because they need to be checked thoroughly. And these texture maps are then uh, run uh, through uh, softwares and they can be run on software, on professional softwares like uh, Cinema 4D or uh, 3D, 3DS, uh, 3D Studio Max. And uh, they are, and with these texture maps, you can have uh, uh, high fidelity uh, renders for the photorealistic renders, but you can also run these uh, texture maps uh, on uh, on an online uh, product configurator uh, like the, the one that we use, like ours. And uh, in, uh, in that case, uh, you can have uh, a, a, a reasonably realistic uh, uh, look and feel of the material uh, without the uh, bulkiness of a heavy load on the, on the local machine. I mean, when you, when you use a local software, you can rely on the computing power of the local computer, sorry for repeating. Uh, while when you work with final users online, uh, you need to get to the nearly the same result uh, only using the power of a browser. And of course, browsers, connections, everything is going forward. And, and so even digitization techniques and configurators must go forward just like browsers and the internet browsing is, is, uh, is progressing. Do you have any opinion about what's the next level of, the, of this digital experience concerning materials? Or is it to ask too much? <laughs> No, well, well, of course, uh, if you if you ask about my dreams for furniture retail, uh, we can stay here for the next few hours of talking about my dreams. <laughs> so it's, uh, uh, but, but uh, yeah, well, uh, it's not something I've, 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 I have many 
projects, not projects, many ideas in, in my, my so-called drawer of ideas, but uh, it's one thing to uh, have a, an idea, it's one thing to work towards it, so you need the time and money and so on. Uh, so what I'm going to quote, uh, it's not something I've I've never been working on it, but I, I saw a, recently a, 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 TV, a TV show actually describing something like it, like it. and this is great because it means that uh, you, ca you can have a dream business-wise, business -wise, and uh, if it's not absurd, it's very likely that someone else will share the same dream, and so someone, someone else will probably develop develop it. So if you're not going to develop it on your own, uh, if you are late with it, well, you will probably be able to buy it someday. What I'm referring to is the is a verb. I saw this uh, TV show uh, about uh, uh, a startup here in Italy that actually developed a technology uh, through which uh, uh, you lay your index finger on this uh, tiny, tiny surface, like the one that reads your fingerprints on a laptop to unblock it to to and uh, this this uh, the tiny device does make you feel uh, the sensation of of a certain texture of a central material in terms of uh, in terms of the feel on the finger and in terms of temperature and uh, and so on uh, and actually this sort of tool uh, connected with a, a highly developed uh, product configurator with uh, high fidelity textures, uh, maybe with an artificial intelligence guiding you through it. Well, actually, that could be the future of, of uh, furniture retailing, but it's something that it's not real yet. I mean, it, it will take a, at least a, a few more years, but not just a few. Uh, I would say 10 years to, to get to this point, in, but, but we'll see. Great. Um, let's talk everybody together now. So, uh, as everyone has said, we could spend hours here talking, but for our last uh, round, I would like to know if Lourdes or Mauricio, do you have any questions to Andrea? Anything you would like him to explore? Please feel free. Mauricio? Oh, okay, I would like to, to leave you as a woman. No, no, no problem. No problem. So, um, more than a question, is a thought uh, by listening uh, Andrea's vision about the future. So, my thought is that uh, this pandemic, this bloody situation, um, accelerated somehow all the process that were not sleeping but going very very slowly very very slowly so now we see exactly how the futures of retail looks like this i this is my my strong believing um and of course um industry like us that were based uh, more on, on, on the physical content on the human touch okay we cannot do without it, of course. But we now learning that we have to be closer and closer and to invest as much as possible in these these new technologies. Um, this is exactly what I, what I'm feeling when I when I'm uh, when I'm here. Andreas words and I when I see his job. Uh, this is is clear to me now how the future of our business look like. And uh, so, um, in my case, uh, it is not either a question, uh, it is more a reflection, um, like, uh, like uh, uh, my colleague Mauricio said, uh, seeing what uh, his company, uh, the company from Andrea or Andrea Jobs uh, has been or what he has been doing, um, we realized uh, how um, important uh, is for, for our business to have digital uh, contact to our customers um, 
but uh, I would like to re, uh, to take one of the of the words that uh, Andrea used a lot. He talked about um, interacting. I would like to say uh, to transport it or to to traduce it to uh, having an experience. So we need to have um, new tools, uh, new programs who allow us um, to bring a digital content to the customer, a storytelling to the customer that we ourselves need to transport, but we need uh, to, to make him feel an experience. And uh, this is what uh, I think is uh, one of our uh, main um, jobs uh, as uh, Interprint in our market with our Latin American customers. And more uh, this year where we see that uh, most of, if not all, most of the shows uh, where our customers and, uh, go and we go with them to get um, uh, ideas, to get uh, inspiration, creation, um, have been postponed. So we need to be there very close, uh, hand by hand, and to bring them to feel an experience with uh, our product uh, through uh, this uh, digital, uh, so, uh, because of the barriers that we have through this digital um, uh, world. And uh, so content is important or, important, or this, uh, this storytelling, but uh, more than that, uh, to be close to them, bringing them uh, an experience, uh, feeling an experience. Because like uh, we said, uh, and I repeat several times today, uh, both uh, realities doesn't exist one without each other, physical and digital. Can I add, uh, can I add something? Please. Can I? Uh, well, actually, uh, I totally agree with the concept uh, about uh, uh, experience and uh, uh, actually experiences start, start at the first contact with the brand uh, and then they move on through different touch points. And actually, uh, the, because the most frequent uh, uh, path is starting from a, from a digital uh, contact and then moving to a physical one, and this brings us uh, a challenge and, and an opportunity at the same time, which is uh, actually, we have been talking about technologies and uh, websites and product configurators, but then brands uh, must start uh, to redesign uh, slowly. It's not urgent, but it's something that must be done to redesign their uh, showrooms uh, to uh, better allow this integration between uh, the, between, uh, uh, the digital, the previous digital digital contacts, uh, a contact a contact that has started before, and uh, the experience that is not starting when the client enters a showroom, but it has already started. So it must be a flow between the two instruments, and and thus uh, uh, it's the digital part that is forcing uh, uh, interior the interior designer of uh, retail spaces to rethink uh, how these uh, uh, spaces are thought. Um, and so this is this is first uh, a challenge and and an opportunity. And then there's uh, two things to consider. Uh, one is actually a kind of a risk, uh, which I encountered myself, uh, a, an error, a mistake, which I made uh, a few times, actually, <clears throat> because it's uh, when you desire something uh, so deeply that it's always in your mind uh, about business, still about business I'm talking about when you desire something deeply, uh, you tend to envision it uh, uh, the, so that it might come before. Uh, when it's when it's due, uh, I'll, I'll make an example. Uh, I have a, I, I still have uh, a file uh, on my computer. Uh, I probably wrote it in uh, uh, October 2009, and I was uh, envisioning for the next year, for the following year, for 2010. I was envisioning a, a showroom where you you mixed uh, uh, the digital and physical aspects, and uh, actually the showroom. Uh, w which would welcome clients would be used by operators to develop high, to develop high quality content, and actually we started doing it uh, a few months ago, and ten years have passed. Uh, so it's and, and not only because uh, things were not ready, but also because uh, we didn't have the means 
to do it uh, before then, uh, before recently. Uh, and so uh, it's easy to see, to be enthusiastic about VR and mixed reality and say, okay, in a couple, I must run because in a couple of years, uh, this would be uh, everyday retail. And uh, it's likely that it will take longer than that. So one must, must be open to new technology. Uh, every brand must invest in, in what is not the, what's not the distant future, but it's already reality. But at the same time, you must not rush things and you must be, um, we, you must have a clear view in this regard. And one last thought, uh, and then I will be quiet and <laughs> stay shut, uh, it's that, uh, as much as we talk about technology, I'm a technology, a technology enthusiast. One of my projects in this case was not ideas, it was a project, but I, I never completed it, uh, sadly. Uh, it was probably from 2015 or 16. Uh, I worked uh, for, for quite some time on the concept uh, of what I called uh, a retail robot. You might laugh about it, but I worked on a concept of a retail robot uh, connected to a, uh, basically to a, an, evolu a, a, an evoluted chatbot, not AI, but kind of based on machine learning. And uh, this kind of retail robot was meant to assist uh, clients coming in the showroom and giving them a preliminary assistance before a, a real interior designer uh, came by and came available. And uh, I'm not talking about this uh, uh, dead project uh, to say it was uh, it was uh, the the right way to the, the right thing to do, but just to say that as much as we love technology, as much as we want to invest, uh, I N furniture, I N customizable furniture is so complicated, is so bound to creativity, is so bound to interaction with clients uh, that it's uh, difficult to envision a point where humans won't be needed. So everything that we do must be done uh, in, the, in the idea of supporting humans and making them better professionals rather than substituting them. Great food for thought. So I'd like to give a big thank you, Andrea. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks to you for inviting me. Mauricio, thank you very much. <laughs> It was a pleasure. And Lourdes, thank you very much. Uh, muito obrigada. Sou eu que estou muito obrigada de poder estar aqui hoje com vocês e espero que tenhamos um, podido uh, compartilhar uma experiência, uma, uma bonita experiência com, com o público no Brasil hoje. It was great lessons today. So guys, thank you once more. Bye bye. Bye bye.